All right, this video is going to cover confidence intervals for the difference between two means. So the idea here is that we have two totally separate samples, and we want to find a confidence interval for the difference between them. Okay, here we want to examine what the difference between two separate populations could be. So the difference here is that we're looking at two completely separate populations, like girls or boys, or Canadians, Canadians versus Americans, or um, you know uh, Spanish versus French. The idea is there's two separate populations. We have the difference between our two samples, but they might not be the true difference. And the idea here is that, you know, once we take two samples, we have our two samples, and we have a difference between those two samples, but it's just two samples. So the idea is we want to find an interval for what the true difference could be. All right. Now, oh, one more thing I want to say here. Now, how do you find an interval? Keep in mind, the idea is that we're going to have an observed difference, right? So we're going to have a difference between sample one and sample two. So a difference is obviously subtraction, right? So it's going to be a difference between our two samples. And then we're going to plus and we're going to minus our margin of error. Now, remember here, a margin of error is going to be T star times a standard error for the difference. And that's going to be a little bit of a different formula that we're going to talk about in a moment. So the idea of a confidence interval is exactly the same. We have something that we observe, right? We have an observed difference. And then we're going to plus or minus our margin of error. How do you find margin of error? Well, you take a T star and you multiply it by your standard error. And we'll talk about that formula as we move throughout this video. All right, first, we really need to make sure that we understand what we're doing here, right? Think about the whole idea of a sampling distribution. Sampling distribution doesn't just show what one sample looks like. It shows what one sample looks like in comparison to, well, a whole bunch of other samples just like that one. So let's use this example to understand what a sampling distribution for the difference could look like. Okay, for example, alligators have a mean length of 13 feet with a standard deviation of 0.7 feet. The average length of a crocodile is 16 feet with a standard deviation of 1.2 feet. What would a sample of 12 alligators and 15 crocodiles show? Well, the, diff the idea here is we definitely have two different populations. We have alligators versus crocodiles, two very, very different types of animals, yet they are very similar, but they're two different breeds of an animal. So, or species, I guess I should say. So the idea here is the first thing we have to think about is what do we expect the difference to be, right? What do we expect the difference between the two samples to be, right? So this is like the expected difference between alligators and crocodiles. Well, um, crocodiles are 16 feet, alligators are 13 feet, so we expect there to be a three foot difference. Okay, now we know that in our hides, that's a three-foot difference um, in favor of crocodiles, right? In favor of crocs. Crocs are supposed to be three feet longer. So that's really, really simple, right? Well, what about the standard deviation for that difference, right? What about the standard deviation for that difference? Well, this is a little bit tricky, right? If we just think about alligators, right? Alligator standard deviation, right? Standard error for the alligators would be the standard deviation for an alligator, 0.7, divided by the square root of our sample size, 12. That error it is right there. That's pretty easy, right? Well, then we got the standard error, or the standard deviation. Excuse me, actually, I should be calling the standard deviation if these are the true standard deviations. The standard deviation for the crocodiles would be 1.2 feet, divided by the square root of the sample size, 15 crocodiles. Now, so we have the standard deviation for alligators, standard deviations for crocodiles, and now we need to combine those two things together. Well, remember from previous lessons, we are not allowed to add standard deviations. We have to add their variance. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to square the alligator standard deviation. I'm going to square the crocodile standard deviation. Now, what does that happen, right? What happens when I do that? Well, I get 0.7 squared divided by 12, because the square root cancels away, plus 1.2 squared divided by 15, because again, the square root cancels away when you square it. But now this is my total variance, alligators and crocodiles, and I need to put a giant square root around all that to get back to standard deviation. So that is how I find the standard deviation for the difference, right? It's going to me show you how to type that on the calculator. It's actually, actually really simple to type it on the calculator. I'm going to type in a giant square root, and then I'm going to do a separate set of parentheses here inside of that. So I'm going to do 0.7 squared divided by 12, close that off, plus... And I'm a new, new separate set of parentheses here, 1.2 squared divided by 15. Close that set of parentheses off, and there's my answer, 0 0.3699. 0 0.3699. 
0.3699. So just kind of as a quick little um, practice here in terms of what we're doing, right? To find the difference, to find the um, expected difference, you just take the difference of sample 1 minus the difference of sample 2. That's pretty simple, right? To get the standard deviation of your differences, you take a giant square root, the standard deviation squared of your first sample, plus the standard deviation squared divided by the square root of your second sample. Um, and I already wrote that wrong. Oh my goodness, I can't believe I did that, right? Remember, when you square, those square roots cancel away. Sorry, so it's just an N in the denominators here. Now again, we put a little 1 here and a little 1 here to represent that this came from sample 1 and this came from sample 2. In our case, that's alligators and crocodiles. We can even use A's and C's instead of 1's and 2's if we want. So pretty much that is really easy, right? This is how we understand what can happen, right? So the idea is that if we're going to look at many, 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 many samples of alligators and many, 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 many samples of crocodiles, there's not always going to be a three-foot difference. Sometimes we might get a bigger difference, and sometimes we get, might get a smaller difference, but we expect there to be a three-foot difference. Could go up one, two, three standard deviations, down one, two, three standard deviations, and the standard deviation in this case is 0.3699. Now, for sake of the problem, I'm going to round that to 0.37, just to make it a little bit easier to fill in my chart. So this first value would be 3.37, and then it would be 3.37 plus another 0.37, which would be 3.74, and then plus another 0.37, which would be 4.11. So what do we know, right? Well, we know that um, it would be weird, it'd be unlikely for there to be more of a four-foot difference. So if you have a group of alligators and a group of crocodiles, it would be unlikely for it to be um, a four-foot difference between them, right? That'd be kind of weird. But we could also go down, so 3 minus 0.37 would be 2.63. And we can go down another 0.37, that'd be 2.26. And we can go down another 0.37, and that would be 1.89. So same thing on this side. It would be very unusual to have around a two-foot difference. If there was a two-foot difference between crocodiles and alligators, that would be weird. So there's supposed to be a three-foot difference, but it could be a slightly higher, slightly lower. Now, what I like most about this here is I see a whole bunch of positives here. At no point did I dip down to the negatives. I mean, I guess I could dip down to the negatives way down here, but that would be very, very unlikely. So typically speaking, most samples, a huge amount, it should, al crocodiles should be bigger than alligators for samples of 15 and 12. So the idea is that um, I need a mean, I need a standard deviation, and I need the normal model. Now guess what? Of course I have to have my, th uh, my three conditions met, but we know and love those conditions. That's all pretty easy. All right, now let's take a look at an actual problem here where our goal is to find a confidence interval. So a doctor wants to know if there's a difference between the weights of babies born in two different countries, France and Spain. So again, two completely separate populations. A sample of 50 babies, um, excuse the typo there, from France had a mean of 7.5 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.62 ounces. And a sample of 60 babies from Spain had a mean of 6.8 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.52 ounces. Find a 90% confidence interval for the true difference. Now before I start, I like to kind of get everything organized here. So there's a lot of data in this problem. So I'm going to make kind of two lists here, Spain and France. Okay, so for Spain, I had a sample of, let's see here, Spain was 60 babies, mean of 6.8 ounces, standard deviation was 0.52, and the sample size from Spain was 60 babies. From France, I had a mean of 7.5 ounces and a standard deviation of, let's see here, 0.5. 6.2 ounces, and that came from a sample of 50 babies from France. So it's really important, especially when these problems get a little bit more complicated, that you keep everything kind of organized here. Now, it's pretty obvious to see that France was bigger than Spain, right? So I do see an, an, an observed difference, right? My observed difference, I'm going to call this observed difference. Okay, look some abbreviations there. The observed difference was 7.5 minus 6.8. That was an observed difference of 0.7 ounces. But I know that, you know, it could be a little bit higher, could be a little bit lower. This was just my two samples. Um, you know, if I looked at other samples, it could be something different. So that's why the whole idea of why I want to find a confidence interval for what that true difference could be. 
Okay, so let's kind of run the gamut all the way from forget beginning to end over here. All right, so first step is I do need to check my conditions. Okay, now uh, let me go through these conditions. I'm not going to write them all down. I'm just going to kind of go through them real quick and put some check marks. Both samples must be random. The both the 50 sample, the 50 babies and 60 babies both must be random. 50 and 60 both must be less than 10% of their respective populations, which I would assume is true. And both samples are actually big enough. So even if the populations of these babies are non-normal. Central limit theorem says that 15 and 6 are both bigger than 30. I'm good to go. Now there is a fourth condition when you're working with two samples, and that's that the samples must be independent of each other, meaning that the two samples cannot be mixed. I can't have any babies that are both from France and Spain in the same sample. It wouldn't make sense anyway, but I do need to make sure that both samples are independent of each other. So it's a fourth condition when you're working with this. All right, now my work here is actually really, really easy. The first thing I need is that observed difference, right? My observed difference was 0.7. Then I'm going to go up and I'm going to go down. Now I got to keep in mind too that observed difference of 0.7 was in favor. F babies from France are a little bit bigger on average than Spain. Now I also am going to need a margin of error back here, right? Now the first thing I need here is my critical value which is called T star. Okay, real quick, why am I going to use a T star here? Well, because I'm dealing with sample standard deviations, not population standard deviations. So, how many degrees of freedom do I have? Well, this is kind of tricky, right? I have 49 degrees of freedom from the one set of babies, and then I have uh, 59 degrees of freedom from the other sample of babies, so I actually have 108 total degrees of freedom. Okay, so again, um, I just took your my sample size minus one plus my other sample size minus one. So now to get my uh, invert T here to get my T star, since I want to be 90% confident, that's going to put 5% on the bottom tail, and I do have 108 degrees of freedom. And that's going to give me a T star of 1.659, 1.659. So that was pretty easy. I hope you agree with me. Now, the only other thing I need is my standard error. Well, here I go. All right. Well, let me show you how to calculate this standard error. Well, for the babies from France, or let me get make sure I get everything right. For the babies from Spain, it was 0.52. Okay. So the babies from Spain, it was 0.52, that's going to be squared, divided by the sample size of 50 babies from Spain, plus from France it was 0.62 squared, divided by the 60 babies from there. Now, again, you want to make sure I don't mess any of these up, so the 60 babies, oh, I did mess that up, it switched, the Spain was 60, so the 0.52 should have been 60, see, I kind of, of course, I made that um, mistake on purpose just to show you that you got to make sure that your numbers are all matching up here. The Spain was 60 and the France was 50 and then I'm going to put a giant square root around all that. Now once again that's a little bit different than our normal formula but it's I kind of showed you in that previous problem over how I'm squaring those and then adding the variance and getting back to standard deviation. So let me go to my calculator real quick here and type that in. So that's going to be the square root of, and I need a set of parentheses here, 0.52 squared divided by 60 babies. Uh, that was Spain, plus France is point, oh, I need a set of parentheses here, 0.62 squared divided by 50 square root around all of that and that looks like it's good to go just kind of make sure you give it one look through make sure it's right I believe it looks good 0.1104 so 0.1104 is my um, value there so now my margin of error is going to be 1.659 times the 0.1104 and I get 0.1831 and then my 0.7 is going to be plus or minus that. So 0.7 plus 0.1831. And then 0.7 minus that. So that's going to get me a confidence interval going from as low as 0.5169, comma 0.8831. Now, how do I interpret this interval? Because interpreting is, of course, of course, my fourth step. Or my third step, excuse me. So the third step is I am... 90% confident the difference in weights between babies born in France 
and Spain is between 0.52, you can round it for the sake of your answer here, and 0.88 ounces. Now, what is probably most important is that you understand this is a difference. I'm saying that I don't know the difference between French babies and Spanish babies. I really don't. But I do know with 90% confidence that it's somewhere between 0.52 ounces more for babies from France to as high as 0.88 ounces more from babies from France. What's interesting is that this interval tells me that babies from France do weigh more there is a statistical proof here that babies from France do weigh more than babies from Spain because the entire interval is positive, meaning that zero is not in the interval. See, if zero is in that interval, then that would tell me that there could be no difference, that babies from Spain and France could actually be equal. And if one side was negative and one side was positive, then that could tell me that it actually could go to babies from France being heavier to babies from Spain being heavier. could go either way. So the fact that the entire interval is positive, all above zero, tells me that babies from France are probably, with 90% confidence, going to weigh more than babies from Spain. How much more? I don't really know. Maybe 0.52 ounces to 0.88 ounces. So, that's it. Pretty easy. Hopefully you understand the gist of it. It's actually, again, like I said, really, really, really simple. Just keep in mind the idea of how I built all this was I built it on, hey, what's the difference? Okay, what's the difference in your sample? And how does that deviate? How does that difference deviate? And again, that's where we have this new formula that I've shown you right here. So, hopefully that was pretty simple for you, and I'll see you on the next video.